Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and today we're continuing with the argon experiments. Uh, my flow meter came in. Let's talk about the flow meter. So we we're going to have the resolution that we wanted. This one's 0 to 10 cubic feet an hour. And you can see I've built a bracket. Uh, this is going to bolt right to the back of your oven, so you don't have to drill any holes in the oven to mount this. Uh, this mounts to the two upper uh, fan holes on your cooling fan in the back, so it's going to bolt right to the back. Then I'll put the top of your control panel right, uh, right at the bottom of the gauge, so it's it'll be right in sight and right to the side of your oven. And the porting for it is in the back here. Uh, this goes out. The upper port goes out to your uh, argon tube, and the lower is the connection off to your welded bottle. Okay, so that's the uh, bracket. Uh, that we're going to have for the kit. All right. And then a new injector, I tr or a new argon tube injector, whatever you want to call it. I'm trying what we've got here is a swage lock fitting, uh, eighth inch uh, MPT female, uh, mainly just because I wanted to match the pipe fittings in the gauge. But we got an eighth inch uh, MPT here. This is all stainless. We got a swage lock fitting here. But then down at the end, you'll notice I got four small holes, and I've plugged the end. I tapped the end uh, 1032 and just run a little, run a little stub um, in there. Uh, it's only threaded up about an eighth of an inch, so that'll uh, plug up the end. And this is gonna, you can put it in, down in the oven and clock it around uh, until the four ports. I think uh, aiming them towards the four corners of the inner chamber are gonna be enough. Now this is going to be uh, enough to pass through the insulation and hang down into the oven about a, uh, about a half an inch. And the ports are going to be about a quarter inch off the ceiling of the oven. In the roof of the oven, you still need to drill and tap. And I made a little bushing here. This, these were just plugs, eighth inch pipe plugs. But I drilled a hole in it. And I don't know if you can see down in there, there's a high temperature uh, O-ring. And this just slides in there and creates kind of a friction fit. So this, um, the argon tube will just kind of stay wherever you put it. Now I do have concerns about the O-ring living. Uh, they're rated for 450 degrees, but it, this tube is way on the outside of the oven, way on the outer skin. And uh, we, we're seeing the outside temperatures of about 200. So if it stays that way and this fitting doesn't get hot, uh, I think we're going to be fine. Remember, we're passing gas through here, so it 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 actually cools this whole unit as the gas is flowing. And uh, I made it a slip fit, so we anytime you're not using gas, you can just simply pull this out of the oven. All right. So we've got uh, what I want to do today is a full temperature test. We're going to put this setup in there. Uh, install my new bushing so I don't have a permanently installed injector uh, in the oven. But I'm going to install this in the oven and I'm going to run it all the way up to 2000. And I'll be able to see uh, my uh, flow rate. Um, I think we're going to flow about, uh, yeah, let's, look, we're going to flow it high at first. I'm going to probably flow about 8 cubic feet an hour into it. And make sure the oven will make 2000 degrees with 2000 watts with that much cold argon going in the oven make sure it makes temperature and then also and then we'll check some temperatures on this injector how it, how hot it's running here and then we'll slow the argon flow down and see if this temperature rises that might be interesting all right but uh that's my new and you know, that's my new uh, injection system this is uh 2.0 you know i learned a lot on my first go around so i'm uh applying what I've learned and trying to make an improvement. All right, uh, let's get over to the oven. Okay, well, I got my flow meter set up. I just got it clamped to an angle block because I'm not going to, I'm not going to put a flow meter on this. I don't use argon. This is just for testing, but you get the idea. This, this flow meter will actually sit, um, when it bolts to the unit, it'll actually sit just right back here, right on top of this panel on that bracket and it'll bolt to the, to the fan on the on the back so it'll it'll sit up there and I've got my injector 
And I'm just using quick connect tubing. I don't think this thing's going to get hot enough to even affect this uh, polyethylene tubing. And I've got it, uh, I'm ready to plug in. I got my bushing installed here. And this is in the same hole I had before. And you can see there I've got friction on that O ring. So it's going to sit wherever you uh, put it. And then we're going to connect up here. And I just wanted easy connections, just a push to connect. Works fine. And we're ready to flow argon now. Um, let me turn the reg down, turn the gas on. Yeah, I don't think it makes any difference to go through two flow meters, but I think the last flow meter in the line would be judge and jury. And I'm just going to crack that and get a little bit of gas flowing here. This will be interesting. I'm showing about two, three, yeah, I'm setting about three and a half cubic feet an hour. Let me put this one on five. Let's see where. If, okay, so this one's pretty accurate. I'm right at five there. I'm almost, I'm about four and a half there. So it's, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Um, I'm going to flow. Um, I, I took some advice from a few people and they said what you want to do is do a long gentle purge on your oven before you even fire it or do anything uh, what you do is you get your parts loaded in there um, get your argon flowing gently don't tr don't try to do a hard fast purge because argon and oxygen mix together very easily so do a very slow gentle purge uh, for about 20 minutes I'm gonna run that at I'm I'm currently at uh, four. I'll take you in a little closer and let you see that uh, Dwyer. A little black balls right at uh, four. So we are purging right now. There's the setup. And I'm going to just throw some scraps in there. I haven't loaded the oven yet, so you need to do all your pre-purging with your parts in there and, and be ready to fire because you don't want to open the door. But I'm going to turn the argon off. I'm going to load a few pieces of scrap in there, and then we're going to start an argon flow for about 20 minutes and then do a firing. Okay, in case you wanted to see, that's what the injector port looks like inside the oven. So it hangs down about a half inch, and then the... Uh, um, the, the holes are actually about a quarter inch off the ceiling, but I've got them pointed to the four corners of the oven. So that's what it looks like inside the oven. Okay. So I got some little bits of junk here, just some scraps of O1 squares that, oh, that must've been a bad day. Um, yeah, pieces of squares and pieces of O1. So anyways, I got some scrap. We're going to test with that. And check, we're going to check for scaling, obviously. Uh, I haven't started a cycle. I have started a little uh, a little purge. But the, I'm going to start the timer as soon as I close the door. I'm just going to put a couple of scraps of O1 in here. It's right in the center, right underneath that uh, argon tube. And uh, I'm going to wait 20 minutes. Uh, I'm, right now I'm flowing uh, 4 cubic feet an hour on my flow meter. So i got a real gentle flood going in. And I'm going to <clears throat> uh, set a timer for 20 minutes, and then I'm going to start the cycle. So I'm going to give the oven time to, to purge itself out gently. Okay, so, uh, and we're going to run this in a normal cycle. That's going to go all the way up to 1500, two-hour ramp, soak, blah, blah, blah. And then, uh, you know, and then quench our parts. And then from 1500, we're going to run it all the way up to 2000 and just make sure that the oven handles the uh, extra cooling load of the gas. You know, we want to make sure the 2,000 watts, it's still going to make it. I think that it will, but uh, let's find out. Okay, well, it's 20 minutes later. We've been flowing at four cubic feet an hour here on the, on the flow meter. We're ready to start our cycle. We're going to pick uh, execute program, yes. And we're going to pick run yes and we're going to enable heat 
And now we can see our green is going to start climbing. Same cycle we had before, uh, 1,500 degrees over a two-hour period, 20-minute soak, and then a one-minute alarm. <clears throat> but I'm going to let it flow at uh, four cubic feet an hour. And then I got, uh, I don't have a fancy FLIR, but I do have a little Greenlee temp gun. And we're going to aim it at the fitting and around that fitting and make sure that thing's not overheating and risking the O-ring and things like that. So uh, I think with the Argon Flow, I don't think we're going to have any problems overheating that, that assembly. Uh, if you fire the oven with no gas, then you might have a problem. But let's find out, all right? Okay, well, we just made temperature here. We're, we just got to 1500, so now it's going to start soaking. Uh, when the cycle started, I went from, if you recall, I uh, began the cycle at 4 CFM. I took it up to 6 as soon as, as soon as everything started, you know, timing out. So I started flooding it a little harder with argon after my 20-minute pre-purge. Um, our fittings are, are staying cool. It, this, is, this thing is still cool to the touch even though the top of the oven is very warm. Um, we got my temp gun here. And the actual oven top right now is about 150. And I'm, I don't know whether I can get a good reading on this fitting or not, but it's not even 100. So that the gas flowing through this is actually cooling this uh, fitting right here, and it's, it's, it's not getting hot at all. Um, our next test after this, after we pull these parts and make sure this setup works with the ports and everything and make sure our, uh, you know, our needle in here or our, our probe is going to be, is going to live hanging down in that chamber. I want to make sure that's staying cool and not building up a bunch of, uh, you know, it's 316 stainless, but it can still burn out what little carbon's in there and, and make a mess with the stainless steel if it overheats it and make it so it won't pull out of the fitting. So I need to check that and make sure that's gonna work. And then we're gonna take the whole thing up to 2000 with the same flow and make sure it's gonna make temperature with that extra cooling effect from the gas. So um, that's where we're at with it now. It's been two hours now and uh, I'll bring you back. We'll quench them, check the scale and then do uh, add out another 500 degrees to the oven and take her all the way up. Okay, we just finished our soak, and uh, the alarm went off, and I silenced the alarm. And now I'm just letting it run at 1500, doesn't matter if it runs over. Now our top temperature is very high, what we're used to seeing, about 185 degrees out here. You know, hot enough where I can't just hold my hand on it, that's, that's still very warm. But then the argon fitting is still quite cool, all the way down to the bushing, even the bushing's running pretty cool. Um, trying to get a reading on that, it's pretty tough, it's pretty small. I'm seeing less than 100 degrees, about 98 on this guy right here. So I don't think we're risking this plastic tubing, anything, with the, the, as long as you keep argon flowing, because I know damn well, as soon as, if you don't have argon flowing, it's going to soak up in there. So that's why I made it easily removable, so when you're running your oven with no gas, Pull the, uh, pull the probe out. All right, let's get these things hardened. Now I have not preheated my oil because I don't care about these parts. They're nice glowing red. Watch them flash, and they're going straight into the oil. Here comes the other one. <laughs> Been a well fire. Thank God the inside of that oven will take that kind of heat. All right, uh, we're gonna go ahead and re-enable, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and run it all the way up to 2000, and check outside temperatures, and see if we can get that probe to fail. There you go. Climb, baby, climb. Okay, well these are out of the uh, out of the oil, and all I've done to them is take them to the sink and spray them with Purple Power and uh, wipe them down with red Scotch Brite. 
Most of the scale just knocked right off. Out here in the front, this is pretty interesting. This is where it was facing the door, so the oxygen flooded in and hit these first. So I found that pretty interesting. There's the back. See, the backs are really clean. There. And we made hardness, no problem. So those are, those are hard. I'm not going to go to the trouble to set up the hardness tester, but uh, I thought it was pretty interesting that just the two tips towards the door or is it where it scaled up? All right, well, the oven's on its way up to 2,000, and uh, we're gonna let it fly there for a little while, make sure that probe's not gonna melt down at the max temp. Okay, well, we've been sitting at 2,000 for about 20 minutes, and our connector and our probe and everything is still running pretty cool out here. Top of the oven's definitely too hot to touch. But our hose isn't getting hot, so I don't really have any worries about this thing getting hot as long as we're flowing gas. I did crank it up to 10 because I wanted to test the oven <clears throat> to make sure that the 2,000 watts of the oven could still overcome the cold gas at maximum flow rate. So 10 CFH is your maximum flow rate. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start pulling back the CFH now that we're on temp. I'm going to start pulling back the CFH and see what kind of temperature change we get out here on the uh, argon hose uh, uh, poking through the oven. I'm sure this is going to come up as the cooling gas slows down. Okay, well, we've been sitting here. It's actually been 45 minutes at 2,000 degrees, and uh, I'm all the way down to 4 now. I, pu I pulled the... Uh, I pulled the argon down to four about 20 minutes ago. So I've gone, I was at, I started at 10, dropped down to six, and I'm down to four, which is minimum flow rate for this oven. And our argon fitting is still, it's over 100, but I can hold my hand on it without, having, without getting burned or pulling away. And our hose feels good. It's not getting soggy feeling. So I think the argon injector is gonna live. Uh, let's go ahead and shut the oven down. I'm going to let the gas flow, which is what you should do too until the oven's down below a reasonable temperature. I'm going to say somewhere between 600 and 800 uh, when that oven cools down enough. And th that way the probe, you know, doesn't flare up and get uh, red hot. All right. Uh, and after, after it does cool down, we're going to pull that argon tube out of there and see what it looks like. See whether we think it's going to live. See if it got stuck in the bushing. See if we melted the O-ring. Let's see what happened, okay? I gotta make sure this thing's gonna live. Okay, well the oven's down to uh, 600. So I thought I'd try to pull the probe out and see what it looks like. And we got the gas off now. Oh, yeah, that's okay. There's some discoloration. That O-ring's not very happy. Well, the O-ring uh, snagged on the way out with all this build up here it discolored but it didn't turn black which I find kind of interesting let's disconnect that hose real quick uh, these quick connects are awesome you just push that little collar in you can pop the hose right off so they make for a pretty fast connection um, let's take some uh, scotch bright to it Yeah, the O-ring's probably not such a great idea. So I think what I'm going to do is just uh, uh, drill that out to the next size up, you know. And there it is. It's polished back. So it didn't ruin the stainless. Let's put a background to that. It didn't ruin the stainless steel. Definitely got hot. Discolored it. It didn't turn it black, so what I'm used to seeing. So we know it wasn't glowing, uh, glowing red hot. But with it polished, oh yeah, it slips right in. But I can see down in the hole that that O-ring just is not happy after I drug that scaly stuff across the O-ring. So I qu I even question the need of having an O-ring. I think just a bushing there. And uh, drill that out to the next size up uh, hole. It's uh, see, it's pretty tight there. So when everything swells up, and moves around, it's probably not good to have a 
super mm -hmm. tight fit, I think we should uh, drill it out to the next size up, leave the O-ring out of it, and call it a day. I don't think that's going to hurt a thing. But uh, the argon tube survived. Alrighty. But uh, the O-ring is still uh, intact, you know, it's even even dragging that uh, scaly stuff across it. You know, I pulled this out. You know, the last inch or so up down here was real chalky and scaly, so it, uh, it the O-ring didn't like getting past it, but it didn't absolutely destroy it. So the O-ring might have to be replaced every once in a while. I can include some spares. It's not that hard to change. You just dig in there with a a scribe point and dig that uh, o-ring out of there so giving you spares is no big deal okay well it lived and it worked you know our parts uh, were clean just like the last test and the flow meter you know helps helps out a lot that little Dwyer flow meter right there maybe I can zoom in on that just a tad there's our fan on the hotshot cycling uh, this is a good little flow meter, you know, it's, uh, I, I feel it's accurate, it's got good resolution, it's compact, it's not this massive heavy bronze thing, so on this little bracket it'll bolt on to the, to the hot shot nicely. So we're going to send one of these out and let uh, an undisclosed recipient play with it and see what he loves and see what he hates about it. Alright, stay tuned for his feedback. I will tell you this. He's a tough customer. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. And here's another thought. A little bit of anti-seize. It'll just help lubricate that O-ring and lubricate your uh, tubing going down in the oven. So I think uh, that would help quite a bit, too. And it'll take the heat. You know, this stuff is uh, pretty heat tolerant. So a little bit of lubricant on that uh, O-ring and tubing would uh wouldn't necessarily be a bad thing be careful though that stuff though a little bit goes a long ways okay well the only thing that gave me any trouble was the the bushing and uh, uh tubing interface and what i've done with this you can see i've still got my o-ring down there you can see it the red one and i took the this is a 255 gauge pin uh, the tube is 250 on the dot, so I actually reamed this out to 255 on the bushing. I can even get it past the O-ring, even with those square ends. Um, but it, it's a nice tight fit at 255, so I basically gave it an extra 5 thousandths clearance. So now the bushing's just, you know, it's got a real sloppy fit and... It just goes to show you that left up to their own means, a machinist will always make things entirely too tight. So, um, you know, I think this extra slop in there is what's needed to get past that O-ring and, and get all the corrosion and, uh, you know, oxidation and everything that, that accumulates on the tip to get it past that O-ring without, you know, absolutely destroying it. And it still stays wherever you put it. You know, it's, it's nice and firm. It's not going to, you know, so if you clock this thing, it's going to stay there whatever so I think uh, I think that extra five thousandths clearance is gonna be exactly what we need so um, I had to do it with a, uh, a little boring bar but I think I'll order in a 255 reamer uh, if, if 255 uh, proves to be the right size okay so and and changing out o-rings get one of those those things are awesome get that little hook on it just go down that hole and just curl it around that uh, O-ring and she comes right out. Alright guys, those are my final thoughts and uh, we're going to send this on down the line for further testing from another YouTuber.